So I smell masters in the air. I smell spring football boys and girls. Best in the league. Let's get on this for all. Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of High Top Sports. It is, in fact, the best day of the week. And as always, we got a jam-packed show. We're going to bring on Swolder. We're going to bring on Mr. Zach Goodall to talk all things spring practice because lies are going to start flowing out. I'm telling you right now, Will Harris interview that has me absolutely jazzed up. Then an offense and defensive breakdown, projections on starters, and Masters Week obviously is here, so we got to talk about that. It's going to be a going, boys and girls. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and bring in the boys. Mr. David Swolder quiz, everybody. And then his retirement party, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zach Goodall. Zach, what's going on, big dog? How are you, man? Doing good. Yeah, it's uh, it's the proper send-off. There's no place I'd rather be today after uh, after getting that news out of the way. I appreciate that. So anyone who doesn't know, uh, who isn't yeah, following Zach on Twitter, uh, you're in trouble. But... Uh, Zach is, uh, how, how you say it, Zach, I don't want to say it the wrong way. You, what, what's happening here, Zach? Let the people at home know. Yeah, I got you. I'm, um, after about five years, I'm stepping away from my position, uh, with fan nation on SI with just a lot of changes going on with them, the industry as a whole, uh, I've decided to take a step back from that. Uh, I don't have any official, like move in place i'm trying to work out some things now but i don't have anything currently set up but it um it it, unfortunately it it brings i believe an end to my time covering florida at least for the time being uh like i said i've been doing it now almost five years with this site uh at all gators i'm really proud of what we had going on over there i counted it up yesterday and we had including not including myself 19 different writers join me over there doing that same with our Buccaneers in Miami site that I got to help a lot of people that really trusted me and believed in my vision for those sites. And I can't thank them enough. Uh, they're the reason why I'm here on the show with you guys today, truth be told. So uh, I'm really excited about whatever's going to come next, but obviously it's it's bittersweet. This has been so formative, so, so big, so important <clears throat> in this stage of my career learning really, I mean, sorry, I'm getting long winded. Um, I, I think I've told you guys this, like, I didn't go to journalism school. I didn't finish college for that matter. I really dedicated to doing this full time. And I did that here. I did that in Gainesville. Once I moved here and started this job, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And and really, I am so thankful for for the experiences that I've gotten to have here and and really learning the journalism game and and the sports media game. Honestly, you see why so many people come here to go to school at UF and study sports journalism, because it's just it's an awesome place to do it. That's incredible. And long-winded, uh, you, you deserve the mic, man. We appreciate you coming on here and always chatting it up with us. So yep. we're, we're happy to have you on your send-off party as well, too. So a uh, hell of a career, man. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Hey, give it up for Mr. Zach Goodall. Phenomenal job, man. Congrats. Appreciate you happy guys. for wherever you, your future Thank takes you. Thank you for being the party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it, man. I feel like I'm starting to think as you were talking, I was like, maybe I have this track record with the signed helmets. All those guys hit the transfer portal. Connor Clark used to come on the show. He retired. You come on the show. And you retired. Maybe, maybe we, we gotta start just stop having people on the show. I don't know. We're, we're, we're not a good track record here. They're graceful people. retirements. So many guys have these like shoot Tom Brady, Brett Favre kind of moments where they're kind of retired, don't know, but like here I can come on and like ride off into the abyss. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, we're we're like the retirement party that you come to. <laughs> Anybody that is ready to. Just- uncovering the beat come on high top man we got you covered yeah come and uh come and have some fun i love it all right man well let's let's talk football one last time obviously you know if you ever want to come on and chalk it up as a fan you're always welcome we gotta get connor back on here I keep telling me you get him back on here because the guy still loves ball and obviously still a big gator fan i don't think he's really retired he still he still tweets like he's involved with it i think it was no. i think he's got a big comeback in the works yeah i'm just that's just my my you know little feeling i got but we'll see uh <laughs> let's let's dive right into it man how we got our last little practice in. You're posting some clips. I've got that pulled up here. 
A um, lot of great things that we're seeing. A lot of big names we're hearing. I'm seeing Marcus Burke, DJ Douglas, or some names that are really starting to amp up. Joey Slacken was getting some love. We got a little projection where it looks like um, Banks might be getting the nod over. This is Del Torre's projections over Joey Slackman. Kind of give us, you know, some other things maybe we haven't been hearing as much from what you're seeing at the practices and what are you expecting in the spring game? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with Nick's assessment on Slackman there. And I think in part it's, you know, learning a new scheme, still coming off of the injury, even though he's been back to full participation, but he started limited. Uh, so I could see Banks still holding on to that role for the time being. But even if you're to just take Slackman for, you know, the flashes he has shown in practice and applied across the board, I, I think you're seeing the growth from the players that you wanted to see the growth from. Uh, the rising second year players, for example, the ones that, whether they got a lot of playing time last year or not, they're starting to make their marks it, it, at a minimum in spring camp. And, and we're going to see what that looks like in a game situation, obviously on Saturday and moving forward. But the, the reviews on, as Billy Napier has put it, the, the first to second year jump is what he thinks is one of the most critical in the entire game. And, and you're hearing that about a lot of different guys. I think you're probably hearing it most about Aaron Gates, the defensive back. He's played corner. He's played safety, he played wide receiver in high school. He's doing a lot at star with Sharif Denson, another rising second year player who got to play a bit last year. And, and from all accounts, those are kind of the two front runners at star two rising sophomores who probably got fewer than a hundred snaps combined in their career. And, and, and you do hear that in several different positions. And you pair that well with, we were talking with Billy Napier the other day about the transfer class. And this is the biggest, I think I said this year too, biggest single period transfer class they have brought in. There were 12 guys, if you include Brian Taylor Jr. and Jameer Grimsley, which is kind of, you know, whatever. Sure. But they, they were aggressive this portal. It was different than usual. And, and at least some of, if not most of these guys are making an impact. From transfers, Slackman's uh, one, Brandon, uh, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon's another on the offensive line. If I were to take my biggest one, it'd probably be Grayson Howard. Uh, he played a good bit as a freshman at a hard position at South Carolina in the SEC. And, and he's come in not only having that under his belt, some really good experience, but there are a lot of injuries there uh, at the linebacker position. Sure. You've got Shamar James, who's been limited the entire camp, Derek Wingo. Manny Nunnery had a brief injury, I think, in the first scrimmage and might have been limited for a period of time. Uh, there have been a lot of reps for a guy like Grayson Howard to come in and take, and people were already expecting him to, if he wasn't starting, at least be a significant tri contributor. I think at this point, you kind of have to lock him in. Like He's been getting effectively all the reps, probably at both linebacker positions. Uh, he's, he's one of the guys that I think they have a lot of high hopes for, much like a lot of these other transfers. Yeah, I've heard Pup a lot. So you're are you picking Pup over the A's of Turners to try for the Bridges as well, too, and the Douglases? You're liking a lot? I like Howard a lot. Uh, Bridges and Turner, I'm still just uh, – maybe I've missed it. And, again, it's our limited, our limited viewing period. Sure. You don't get to see a ton. But I feel like I haven't seen them stand out as much as, say, a DJ Douglas, actually. And he's someone that not even from what we see but what we hear, too. He, he's made pl plays and scrimmages – uh, I think Jacob Redner reported that he had at least one pick in the scrimmage this past weekend. So he's continuing to make plays too. It's been pretty consistent. Um, and again, that's not even to discredit the other guys. It's just more of who you hear good things about rather than <clears throat> what you don't hear. And, and I'm definitely hearing a lot about Douglas. That's exciting to hear about Pup. Again, the, the linebacker room was something of question mark last year. And I keep, I've been saying this year, I think there's, there's quantity for sure which we haven't had once we get these guys get back from injury. The quality is un unknown at the moment, just given the youth on the team. But the quality, I think, a ceiling excites me as much more than what it's been in, in quite a long time. And then, of course, the offensive line, there's been a lot of uh, hype behind that. There's some projections on that on the offensive line of more just, again, the quantity, the depth that's there. And again, quality is, is getting a lot of raves and reviews, too. This is something that's going to probably be we we beat the you know until it's dead is on paper we were ranked you know second worst offensive line <laughs> how much worse could you possibly get so hell you just ha you know halfway improve that uh you know we're we're ecstatic to see what it's able to do and it sounds like it's headed in that direction so far yeah it seems that way I think they still have some shuffling that they're trying to figure out uh, the Damian George move to guard uh, is still I think fair to call an experiment at this point really? uh, okay. and Austin Barber, they are still um, just trying to get back to full health. I'm not sure exactly where he'll be when it comes to spring game participation, but they like the transfers. Uh, I've heard 
really good things about Crenshaw Dixon specifically. Uh, I think that he's probably someone that's going to start opposite of Barber uh, when all is said and done. Uh, they really like their young players. Jake Slaughter has continued to get a lot of uh, rave reviews going back to last year as he started to pick things up as the season went on. It, it, it's transitioned. And, and they like Rod Tierney too, and it almost makes it, you know, what do, what do you do there? Like you've got two quality potential centers. Who do you play? Do you move Kearney, who's got guard experience, to guard if maybe it doesn't work out with Damian George? So you're right. I think quantity, they, they're still trying to figure out the quality in all five spots, but mm. now they do have quantity. So right, like the Kearney situation is a perfect one. Like you're probably not taking that job from Jake Slaughter unless he takes a step back. So put Kearney at a position where now he's got a year of strength and conditioning under his belt, of scheme um, fluidity under his belt, and, and now maybe you can put him back at guard in that pinch and not necessarily to say that that's what they plan on doing, but that's one of probably several examples. Uh, Nigel Harris is another both guard spots center. Uh, I don't think Crenshaw Dixon's played guard before, but I would imagine he's got the size that he could probably play both if he needed to and 36, 37 games under his belt. So, right. They've got players who have experience players who know how to take reps at multiple positions and ultimately practice and even some game experience under their belt at this point. Yeah, look, I think the guard position, if, if you're moving Big Rod to guard, which that's like, I've heard that kind of been been hopped around. We had him on the show, kind of picked his brain a little bit about it. He didn't give too much. It's just, it was kind of like five equals one, whatever, wherever I'm needed to win, which is a great mentality to have. But look, I think Damian George, I think he had success at the guard. It was very limited, but it was an improvement from the tackle position. But again, we don't know if it was better than what they all, what, what else is there. Bryce Levitt's obviously been making a lot of noise, and then Big Rod sliding over. Yeah. And Big Rod, for people who don't remember, he was I think the top three recruits of that of that first cycle, or was it last year's or last year's cycle? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, four star offensive tackle. He was a tackle, I believe, when he first came in. But high school, I mean, that that's kind of here and there. When we flipped him from Florida State, so. The guy obviously has experience all over the line coming from high school, and it sounds like he has made a huge progress this year. In the center position, I even talked to him about it. It's a that out of all the positions, in my opinion, is probably the hardest because there's a, one more move that you got to do versus the other ones, right? You've got an, an extra job in a sense by snapping the ball. So you almost got to think like he's if he's eliminating that to move to guard, he's he should have some extreme uh, success in that position. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. And even though he was listed at tackle back in the day, I think he mainly played guard in high school. I could be wrong, but he okay. played some at least. And right, like that with the experience he's got now. And and yeah, it's, you know, snapping is obviously extremely difficult, but blocking at that point in the interior, interior especially once you're doing it is blocking. So you would think for him, especially, you know, he's got the experience. He could probably do it at, at multiple spots. And Bryce Lovett's another one. I, I had forgotten about him, but I know, I think, even going back to signing day, when he signed a year and a half ago, they were really feeling like they found kind of a, a diamond in the haystack. Mm. Or what, what's the, what, 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 I, I never know those terms. I never know those I, I, I pick, I'm picking what you're putting down. Diamond there. in the rough, needle in the haystack. He's, hey, yeah, you're whatever they brain, They thought they, hey, I, got, I got you. A little margarita run a little, a little yeah. heavy at late. I got it. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I Las Caretas. Shout out Las Caretas. I did not know how big their margaritas were till I went there the other day. <laughs> but down by Miapa. <laughs> um, but Bryce Lovett is another one, right? He he had been he had gotten some good reviews from them back in the day. He seems to have really like slimmed out his body a bit more. He was pretty big coming out of high school, like big, big, not big, 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 but big, big. And they've gotten him down to big and tone. And he looks okay. like someone that could be an impact player at guard, too. Love that. Davey? I was about to say, did you say margarita? I got a little bit excited. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you, you go back, you look at last year. I mean, like, these spring practices and everything, you were hearing all about, like, how the offense was moving down the field. You're going to see a lot more passing from Graham Mertz. And everything was great, but you never really heard anything about the defense. Like, there was no no big turnovers, no... No, no improved tackling. I remember Billy Napier saying we have to improve on tackling. You're not hearing that this year. You're seeing a lot of turnovers in practice. And even even Graham Murs has thrown a few, I believe. I think it's one or two that he's thrown. And, I mean, when you take care of the football during game time last year, you only threw three interceptions. So if your defense is actually taking an experienced quarterback that's been in the league for five years and he's been at Florida for two years and he did pretty well last year not turning the football over, he throws a couple, that means your defense probably has improved. And I've heard about DJ Douglas, and his name has came up to me synonymously 
with a whole bunch of people that I've talked to. And, and, and I think that he's going to be a problem for defenses as well. Um, you know, you go and look at the wide receiver unit. Marcus Burks made a few plays. I've always said that we've seen flashes from him, but we haven't really seen him in game and be consistent. He's starting to make some plays out there. And then you got Shamir Dickey from Wisconsin, who's been making plays as well. He's probably been the, I, I guess, maybe the MVP of the wide receiver unit besides Eugene Wilson. Everybody knows what Eugene Wilson can do. I don't need to go ahead and say anything like that. I wrote an article about it earlier today, but I mean, overall, when you you look at offensive line, I, I, I've you know I've talked to a few people. They say they're starting to look better. We'll see when game time happens during the season. But the, the things that like you're hearing, and especially Bryce Lovett, I've heard his name a lot too. How he's made strides. You're, the things you're hearing aren't what we heard last year. And I know that a lot of people will say it's lying season and it's this season and all that other kind of stuff. But you know, people love to lie during the off season. But as I said, if you compare what you heard last year to this year it's completely night and day different story. So now in turn, like everybody's so amped up to watch the spring game, this, the, the orange and blue debut. And you go back, you look at the spring game last year, just about every play Graham Merce was, was snapping the ball. He was getting pressured, like uh, look like our defense was going to be elite. And then you, you find out that our offensive line just wasn't that great from, from last year. So the things that you're hearing out of practice is a good thing. And I, I'm just pumped, man. I, I am pumped to watch the spring game because, like, I just think that overall, from a talent aspect, you got more depth on your offensive line. I think you may not lose a step losing Ricky Persall in the wide receiver unit. We'll have to see how that goes. And anyway, you got a lot of speed back there anyway, so you can utilize that. And I don't even know how special teams is going to look now because we had two different people returning the football that aren't even on the team anymore from last mm -hmm. year. So you hear about Montreal Johnson returning punts, but you don't know who's really turning kickoffs and anything like that. So That'll be interesting to see too, but overall, just everything that I'm hearing is just a lot better from what it was last year. But now, let's put the pads on and see. I I'm excited to see too because last year we forget Mertz was four months into the offense at that point. It's for the spring game, so everybody's learning a lot during that time, and there's so many people learning, but not as much this time. So, look, I think the defense sh should, in my opinion, be more in a in the back versus the offense, given the fact that Mertz has been running this, commanding this offense for a year and a half now, it's going to be interesting to see because I don't think Billy calls plays during this. I mean, he probably chimes in a little bit, but I, I know he talked about in his conference on Sunday that they're going to be picking their teams tonight or tomorrow, excuse me, meaning OC, DC on both sides of the ball. I imagine Callaway is going to be an OC on one side of the ball. So that that's going to be something that I'm going to keep an eye out for too as well. Yeah, I, I also want to yeah. do honorable mention. I, I don't think we've mentioned the running backs either. The uh, Montreal Johnson, obviously, we know he's going to be the starting running back. I've heard Kanan Daniels has been pretty good in <laughs> these practices. He had like a 50-yard stretch play for touchdown just the too. past. Uh, yeah, game ball. Um, you know, a guy that rushed for over 5,000 yards in Mississippi and and won that. I think he won Gatorade Player of the Year of his own state. So, I mean, like you're, you're hearing a lot about these running backs and you know, the loss of Trevor Etienne. You, obviously, Montreal Johnson, you know he's going to be penciled in as the starter. But we may not even care about losing Etienne when the season starts. So I'm just pumped. But go ahead. Go ahead. What you, what you guys are talking about. I didn't mean to interrupt. What about oh, you, Zach? I, no, I, I basically was just – I was basically just going to be in agreement too. And, and I'm curious to see about uh, – Shelton, what you had mentioned with the what the coaching staff divvying up, uh, I I think Billy will call plays and Callaway will call plays in this game, but I want to see what it'll be on defense. We know it'll be Austin for one. The easy assumption is Ron Roberts is the other, but mm. do you need that, or is it about like last year? I remember uh, Napier set up for the game that they thought it was really valuable for uh, for Jay Bateman to go and do it. And granted, he had called plays before, but they wanted to get him some reps. They knew. I guess in high, looking forward, they knew it was coming. But uh, I'm curious if they'll want to do the same thing opposite Armstrong at this point. Like Will Harris has done at least one year of defensive coordinator at Georgia Southern. Uh, Gerald Chapman, I don't think has before. Curious if maybe they'll want to give those guys some run. Or, or Mike Peterson, a guy that's, he's the only original member of the defensive staff. So maybe he gets the opportunity. I'm curious to see how they'll split that up, but offensively, I agree. I think it'll definitely be Billy versus Russ in, in that mm. regard. I like that defensively too. I would love to see Ron Roberts. Cause I know we, we talked about it. One of the shows that he's in the, up in the box, he was up in the box for the practices. So in, like you said, with uh, Bateman, 
that was probably more of Bateman trying to take the job, right? He's looking for that future. Ron Roberts, this is what I like about Ron, is clearly he's, I, I don't think he's, I mean, obviously he wants to continue to move his career, but he's probably at a point in his career, kind of like a Billy Gonzalez, where like, I just want to be utilized for what I'm good at. And I don't have to have the title of DC, but if I can have my hand in the pot and also run this, then that's where I'm best utilized. I think that's what Rob brings to the table. So there isn't going to be this friction of guys trying to step on top of each other. Not saying that that was the case, but now we've kind of seen the future of what happened with Bateman. Maybe that was a little bit what was going on last year. Again, probably this defense, given the fact of how it unfolded, I imagine there was a lot of friction and just not things being aligned or on the same page. Uh, given how what we saw on the field and how we saw it unfold after the field and things we've heard after uh, <laughs> action on the field too. So hopefully a little kumbaya, uh, we'll be able to see that and feel that this game as well. And to Austin Armstrong, that was his first year last year too. So he'll have a whole cycle in as well. So really excited to see what the spring game is going to bring. Um, any talk on, uh, a lot of people keep asking it, we're getting closer. The portal opens up, I think it's the 16th, April 16th. A name I saw get no. tossed around, this is not heavy, but Andy Jean was a name that was being thrown around. This isn't like a credible, like locked and loaded. Haven't seen his name too much, haven't heard of it much. The wide receiver room in a way is pretty thick in the sense that there's a lot of the same type of guys. And so it kind of makes sense, right? When you really break it all down, if you look at the top three, top six wide receivers, according to Del Torre, it's Shamir DK, Eugene Wilson, Khalil Jackson, who's been balling. Then Andy, Andy Mizell, uh, Uge, and then um, Marcus Burke, and then I can't think of who the other one was. Maybe it was Andy. Jean. Probably Frazier's. Frazier's. Yes, Quay Quay it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, so for Andy, he's just been he's just been dealing with what I believe, I could be wrong, but nagging injury. And if not nagging injury, then multiple. I mean, going back to last year, he had his moments of flashing early in the year and then was basically – I don't know if he was sidelined the rest of the way, but I don't remember him making another impact after like two appearances. And he was definitely injured with something going on in his lower body. And that's continued. I think he may have been good to go the first like two ish days of camp, but he's been in a black Jersey since he's not worked out with the receivers past couple of days. I've watched him actually in the indie period, kept a couple of days being of, of the practices we've seen. Uh, and he's just he's only been able to stand there and watch like on the side and it, almost looking a little I don't want to say dejected, but, you know, I'm sure he wants to be out there running those routes that those guys are running. So I don't know. It would be interesting to see him transfer only because like it's not like he's getting pushed out or pushed okay. down necessarily. It's just kind of a, a unideal situation with injuries. Uh, and, and truth be told, I think there are going to be buyers at receiver regardless uh, if someone. Okay. goes out and obviously they're over the scholarship limit now they still are going to um, have to see at least i think two players leave in order to be able to take one mm. but uh, they're still just thin at the position in terms of pure numbers and, and i agree they do have a lot of similar guys um i think especially just by means of the high school recruiting they've done very similar speed Size. first yep. Uh, yep. length kind of second yeah um they, they might want someone a little bit more experienced that does something a bit different, even DK. Like he's, you know, he's an experienced possession receiver and, and he might be a dependable player in this offense, but I don't think there's really anything in his career that suggests he's like a certified number one or like kind of a number two. They, they might want someone that really complements Eugene Wilson well as a dynamic number one point, one B so to speak. And, and I think ultimately at these positions where even they want to rely on their young talent, they want to get their young receivers, corners, uh, offensive linemen out onto the field. Uh, they do still want to back that up with experience. And that's not to say necessarily they would take a wide receiver transfer and peg him in as the starter to take Khalil Jackson or DK's job necessarily, but someone who can play if they need a starter could step in. Um, RJ Moten's a bad example because things didn't pan out, but kind of like the similar path for him. I think that they would be willing to take someone that is is capable of stepping in in a pinch, not someone that's demanding a starting job necessarily, but someone that can offer them some depth for where, I mean, DK gets hurt. Who are you throwing in? Like, is it Aiden Mizell who's caught two passes and, and like maybe he makes a huge jump but even for these guys like without seeing in a game situation they just don't know so they want to make sure that they've got additional depth at spots like that so i could see 
you know, even these positions that we're impressed with wide receiver corner offensive lines gotten some help. So probably not so much there, but maybe more linebacker too, just because yeah. of how young that group is and injured it's been. Uh, I could see some reinforcements coming at the spots that may surprise us. I'm so, okay. A couple things then. So let's break this down because when you said buyer and sellers, I think of like MLB come, come trade deadline, right? You have your buyer and your seller. Your seller is somebody who's nowhere near the playoffs. Obviously that buyer talk, meaning they're, they're going all in. Um, it's a little bit different for college football, but the second transfer portal is you're definitely going to kind of get a vibe of where teams are at. I don't think it's the same sell buy situation as it is for playoffs because right. you're selling to get draft picks. We're just selling to make room. I would say like an Oregon team. We obviously right. have an Oregon channel. They're in a very sell heavy because I think they're like 10 plus over the scholarship limit. So they're, they're in a good sell type of situation where we're at, right? Like you kind of said, we're in a little bit of both. We need to make some room, but we're also in a very aggressive situation where I like that because I think we're comfortable with what we have. We also we're very particular. And now we know this is exactly what we need to get us where we want to be, which is a good place to be as, as long as we can execute on those things. So you are hearing some some buzz then that those position groups anymore on the offensive line. Not that we need anymore, but obviously we we were always greedy. You know, if you want to throw another five star guy in there, I'm not going to complain. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think th just with the additions they've already made, and and especially the second year guys in, in Nige, um, Bryce and Rod, uh, it it seems to me just at least from a numbers perspective too, like they do have a lot of bodies on the okay. offensive line, and it's a position where you can never have enough. Like you can have enough receivers, and sometimes sure. you can have enough corners, but where you're five positions got to go three deep in college. Yeah. I'm sure if the right one, especially I would think someone that's a little younger that they can continue mm -hmm. to mold and not necessarily have to rush out there immediately or demand to start right now. I think they would probably accept that, but, and, and I don't want to say necessarily like I'm, I'm banking on them taking a wide receiver or corner, but it, it's, it's kind of hard for me to see where else, you know, like there are positions where that you, you want to see, these rising sophomores be the guy. So like, will they want to mess with that? Will they want to potentially impact the, what, what they've got going on there? I'm not sure. Um, but at least off of numbers and, and the way experience kind of shakes out, I, I could see receiver and corner for sure. Okay. And so just to kind of keep the, the, the calmness over Gator nation again, anything can happen, but I mean, we haven't really heard yeah. anything crazy happening for the negatively on the portal side for us. We're here mainly positive. Again, we have to make room, so something's going to happen, but it's just the name of the game. I think that's something, too, I think a lot of Gator fans, the, the casuals are going to have to get used to. That guy's coming and going is going to become more of the norm now. When before, if somebody left, you're like, shit's in shambles. Well, no. We have the ability to fill it now, so it's going to be this opening, closing door. And so, we, we, like you just said, we hope to see some guys leave. Hopefully, it's just the guys that we chose to leave, or <laughs> told to leave, versus... Uh, leaving on their own right the guys that because i mean those so the situations can be tricky even the guys that are told to leave but ultimately the ones that you know where it's the best decision for them i mean hopefully sure. these guys are smart enough and, and i know money is ultimately a huge part of it but like some players will probably should see the writing on the wall like again i, I don't think it's a secret to anyone either that they're over the limit too uh, and I think Billy's even been kind of cognizant of that and speaking with us um, in the past. Uh, it's not a secret. They know that people are going to have to make moves. And, and I do think even paired with the opportunities that have been here in spring ball with the 30 some players or 25 to 30 that left, like there's tape. Now these players that might want to test the waters elsewhere that don't see too much going forward, but they, they were able to produce some plays in spring camp, get some reps. Now they have something to market themselves to. Sure. Dave, got anything? Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, I, I would expect like there there to be pe people that leave to enter the portal as well. And, and, and like the, the old saying goes, the best availability or the best ability is availability, right? So if you're if you're not available as say in an Andy Gene situation or anything like that, of course, of course he's upset. He's on the sideline, whatever. Uh, but not saying he's gonna go in the portal. He might just like Florida and he might want to stay. I mean, we've seen plenty of players not get a starting nod, like. I mean, look, look how long Jaquavian Frazier has been here. Like he could have went into the portal a long time ago and he's still here. So, I mean, you, you've got different scenarios, of, I guess, for every person that's on that roster. But 
I mean, as long as spring portal period comes up, as long as you're able to replace whoever you lose with somebody maybe better or more experienced, I don't really think that that's an issue. I think a lot of people, they do freak out when players start leaving the team. But in my head, I'm thinking, well, who are you going to replace them with, though? Like, I, I, I'm not like, like we're, we're over the scholarship limit. I get that. So you're going to have people leave and you won't be able to replace them. But at the same time, you're going to, I mean, and we've even talked about it. And I think even Billy Napier ran it at it. So they were going to still hit in the spring portal period anyway. And you got a couple of positions that probably need more players on it, too. So, I mean, as far as it goes, like if you lose players in the portal and they weren't contributors anyway, so what did you really lose? You didn't really lose anything, right? Um, and in turn, I, I, I think that, um, I, don't, I don't know, I, I, I'm not that big of, of a guy that like just freaks out if somebody leaves in the portal. Of course, you don't want to lose a, somebody like a, a Trevor Etienne or a Princely Human Meanland or anything like that. That kind of looks a little bit bad on the program. Not really, but I mean, the way that they left and what they said, but at the same time, like you're hearing new what's players. what's since they left. <laughs> Right, right. New, new players are coming in, though. They're talking about the new coaching staff, and you're starting to see more turnovers in practices. You're starting to see better improved play. You're starting to be, see better attitudes in the locker room. So, once again, what did you really miss? You didn't really miss anything. So, as far as, like, Gator Nation and everybody, like, kind of freaking out about the portal, I really don't care until I start seeing results on the field. That's when I start to freak out a little. For sure. Zach, my man, legend. Uh, for sure. I appreciate you. The, the relationship we've been able to build doing the show, man, it's uh, been a, meant a lot. So thank you for always hopping on and being ready to rock and roll. Good luck to you and everything, man. I would tell him where to follow you, but now I don't know anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, just shit. <laughs> nah, man. I'm out of here. Whatever. Don't follow. <laughs> you guys won't be missing anything. I don't I've, I've got... I've, I told you I don't have anything lined up right now. You guys are only going to see tweets from the spring game where I'm like just hanging out. <laughs> keep, up that. keep up with our man Zach. Zach, before before I let you go though, give me your top three things you're looking forward to and want to see for this spring game. Uh, that's going to basically let us know that the Gators are going twelve and zero, and then you can sign off. <laughs> uh, quarterback progression. I want to see Graham Mertz make more exciting, deeper throws, which has been the talk. I want to see it. And that comes with wide, wide receiver growth, better protection. It's a all around thing, Okay. but he's just part of it. I say quarterback growth because of Graham and DJ, obviously the, the, the star of the show, even though no one knows what they're going to get out of him in this game, everyone wants to know what they're going to see. Um, I'm fascinated to see not only where he's at in his development, but just what the early plans are what the wrinkles are, what, what what it might look like when DJ Lagway takes the field for Florida in 2024, which I'm still, I still really think is going to be a thing that happens a lot. Even if he's got a lot of work to do with his passing, he just offers a different element. He's a five-star quarterback. It's the state of the game. Like he's going to get on the field and I want to see what that might look like. Um, So if quarterback development's one, I want to, I want validation about the secondary play. Uh, you hear a lot of great things, obviously, all these turnovers, tackling being better in the secondary in particular. I want to see that as true. You see some clips that, that um, who was it, the Teddy Foster clip of him in the scrimmage when he just murked someone. I, I forget who it was. I want to see that Eugene. in not a two-second clip. Yeah, it was Eugene. I want to see that all over the place. Mm. And third... I mean, this isn't about the 12 and 0 or record aspect, but I'm curious what the Billy operation looks like on a Saturday, actually, because they were so big on the Thursday night recruiting and, and taking it away, um, the recruiting opportunity for other programs. Yeah, I'm curious what kind of operation they have going for a Saturday that I would expect it to be busier. They've mm -hmm. got a, a huge plan. I think they said, what, nine, 10 athletic events going on around the spring game. Obviously, it, it, it's a massive weekend to be in Gainesville. And, you know, the, the recruiting poll has been good the past two spring games, but the energy wasn't great. And, and these players are going somewhere on Saturday. You didn't really see too many like dominoes fall right after the game. It still kind of went into summer. If it's a great spring game, if it's exciting, if it's not 10 to 7 and, and it's a great weekend as planned in Gainesville, I'm curious if maybe you see some success there, a little bit of momentum start off the field and really get into the slow season of the offseason on a, on a good note. I love it. Those are, that's how you sign off there, Zach. That was 
I'm pumped. I'm yeah. pumped for those three. Uh, breaking news, though. Yes, Zach is joining High Top Sports. That's the, that's the news. <laughs> nah, Zach, 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 I'll, I'll Zach's 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 big time. Zach's Hollywood boys. He's, this is this is this is literally to him. All right, guys, let's no. keep let's keep it a buck. I'm coming back. I promise you. I'm here. I, I I'll I'll tell the crowd this much. I don't know if I said it beforehand. I know I told you guys, but I'm not moving out of Gainesville quite yet. Even with whatever gets figured out, like I got another lease, so I'm still here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Love it. Hope, hope, All right, hope get us some scoop. So 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 I'll see yeah. you at Harmonic Make Woods Saturday. Hey, you know, because I don't have to write a bunch of stuff before the spring game, I do have the free time. I'll try and stop by. We got to get a pick, Zach. We got to get a pick. We got to get a pick. That's all I ask. Me, me, you, and Connor. Oh, the yeah. Boys, the squad. Honey, yeah. what? Yeah. I'm, if, it's not at, if it's not at Harmonic Woods for some reason, then it's happening at the game for yeah, the yeah. game after. I'm, I'll find you no matter we'll what. Figure, I'll tweet you. I'll tweet. I'll, I'll, hit you, I'll hit you in the DMs. Zach, I appreciate you, big dog. You be awesome. good, man. And uh, we'll see yeah, you Saturday. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you always. Yeah, man. See ya. Thank you, Zach. Man, Zach's a man. Love that guy. Uh, fantastic stuff. Don't go anywhere. We got a jam packed show. Let's go over a few things really quick, though. Saturday, obviously, big game. One o'clock. Dave and I are trying to figure it out what time it started today. He's going to be at Dave by He is going to be at Harmonic Woods Tailgate. I will be posting that on our YouTube and Twitter where you can go to see Dave and possibly myself. Uh, my details of where I'm going to be doing a show at, at the game are undefined yet. But we will be doing a show more than likely from like 10.30 to, uh, or like 9.30 to 10.30, 11.30 is my goal. Because the, the Gator Walks at 12, would like to be a part of that if I can. Get some clips, all those good jazz. Talk to Billy for a quick second, let him know what I'm looking for. All those good things. So, come see us at Harmonic Woods. Harmonic Woods Tailgate, it's not the tailgate. What people don't realize is that it's Harmonic Woods. There just happens to be a, a game that happens after the fact uh, every Saturday. So, Harmonic Woods is an absolute uh, jam Bring your liver and an extra one if you're able to. Okay, those 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 cats are wild. <laughs> I'm gonna be on it. Yeah, like that's a, that's a breed that uh, I I don't I don't I, like it's it's nuts. All right, it's not even it's not for, it's not frat party. It's another level, bro. It's another level. It's like it's old it's older dudes that just got game. You know what I mean? It's like dad strength, like everything combined into one. It's nuts. They're just. It's, 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 I don't know how they get home. Let's just put it that way. I don't know. I don't know. I always say, I always say if you come to a game day and you're worried about losing, don't worry. Come to Harmonic Woods because we never lose a tailgate. They do not. That is a fact. Also too, real quick. I've got a dilemma here. We're on this like little like diet, not diet kick. Cause I hate more diets. Just dumb. We're eating, we're eating better. We've always ate well, but we're watching our calories, really count it, keeping it strict, trying to do this like diet before our cruise. We're going on in June. You're you trying to look like, trying to look like Swolder? Try, no, I'm trying to look like Co Coach Miles. That's what I'm trying to look like. And my mother-in-law makes brownies. And brownies, bro, that, that's my weakness. And I'm, I'm but I, I can't, it's in, the, they're in the kitchen. And now I have to walk what, by. What, what kind of brownies? Just chocolate, just a good old classic chocolate brownie, bro. Just a good old classic chocolate brownie. Bro, bro it's got, no, it's, no, bring, no. it's bringing me to my knees when I walk by the kitchen. No. Like, I'm thinking about it at this moment when I leave it, when we leave the show, I'm going to have to go get me a sliver. Like, it's like taking an, an alcoholic to happy hour. Like, what do you, what do you expect me to do? I, I'm good. If I don't go to the bar, I'm hanging out. But now you brought the bar to me, and you want me to behave. I told the wife, I said, like, you got to throw these things away. Like, I'm, go I'm going to devour these things in the next 24 hours. There's just, it's, she's sure. like, you, have a you need to have a discipline. No. No, I don't. Not when it comes to the brownies. I, I do pretty, okay. I don't, I do okay. I I do I do all right for the most of the other crap we have in there. I have a I will devout demolish a set of brownies and they're freshly baked too. They're just ooey gooey. So you you sure know other ingredients in those brownies? No, no, there's not. <laughs> I ask. <laughs> Need special brownies? Yeah, no. I, if I eat those brownies, then I won't be able to eat the other brownies because I'll be too dozed off on those brownies. But anyways. Be sure yeah. to smash like button and subscribe, obviously, as always. The family's growing. We're like at 2,400 right now. We're kind of cruising right along. Also, last little little promo here. Um, big, big, massive party we're doing at Best Bet for the draft. To April 25th on Thursday, Cody is flying all the way down from Indianapolis. That's like 36 hours away. Flying all the way down. Okay, the guy's like three hours time difference. Uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. This guy's got it. He's got his all decked out. 
We're going to be there. I don't know the times yet, but we're going to be there for like four or five hours. It's going to be an absolute blast. We're doing giveaways, jerseys, skater stuff, Jaguar stuff, etc. There's going to be booze, food. Uh, if you come in, get a, get a, a best bet pass. That's how you enter into the drawing. You can gamble, play some games, hang out. It's going to be a blast. So if you're in the San Augustine area or even within 20, 20 minutes, um, you can come over and uh, hang out with us. So please come by, say hey, have a drink, make a bet at best bet. Off of uh, 95 and 207. Beautiful, beautiful place. Place is absolutely gorgeous. It's going to be an absolute blast. So, come by. I thought you said best buy. Huh? So, I thought you said best buy. I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, no, no. Uh, Nuts or no nuts in brownie shell? Uh, No, I'm, I'm, no nuts. No nuts. Just chocolate chip nuts. All right. So, there is this clip that I want to go over. And I usually just clip certain things, but our man Nick uh, Marcinko, quoted what Will, what Will Harris said. He said, a lot of talent, that's the biggest thing. I was telling Coach Napier, this might be the most talented group I've had just as far as height and length and speed. I found the clip, the entire interview. It's three minutes. Like I said, I usually just clipped up part of it. This three minutes was incredible. I, I have to play the whole thing. It's awesome. If you haven't seen it, you're going to absolutely love it. Great questions, great answers, great responses. Love hearing this from our from our DB coach. The way that he just carries himself, the way that he delivers, just his excitement about the team, how quick just his responses to everything. Like, I love this kind of, this personality fires me the hell up. Okay? That's all I got to say. Let's take a listen. I think that's the biggest thing. I was telling Coach Napier, I was like, man, this might be one of the talented groups I've had, you know, just as far as high length speed. And, you know, that's what Napier always said, which is true. And I feel, you know, the guys that we have with the experience, you know, if you just look at it, Jay Marshall has 1,910 snaps. That's a lot of snaps. And so if you just look at the experience that he has, and obviously we can go down the line with, you know, Asa and, you know, Triquez and DJ with the experience they have. And then having the guys that played last year, you know, as far as the young guys, Ja, um, we talk about Bryce and, and Jordan, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think just having those guys understand, like, hey, coming together and bringing all that with our experience. What about Jason? How do you harness his talent to make more plays, you think? I think you just got to push them. I mean, at the end of the day, we always say it's a standard in our room, point blank period. And so that goes for anybody. That goes for myself as well. Let's be real. This is the University of Florida. I grew up watching this place. I watched them win championships, and we're going to get back to that, and we've got to keep that standard. How did this for everybody. How did this opportunity come about? And kind yeah, of- it's an interesting one. You know, uh, being with the Chargers, I was with a guy named Derek Ansley, um, who worked with Billy Napier twice. Uh, once as GAs together at Alabama, and then obviously they were coming back as position coaches. So came about, you know, hey, DA called him, was like, I got a guy you might want to be interested in. Um, and like I said, I grew up watching Florida, and so I look at it as a challenge. And I know everybody asks, like, hey, you know, why take this job coming out of the NFL? Let's be real. I mean, if you want to, you know, some excitement, like this is what it's about. Like, we get to go play some of the best teams in the country. Who don't want that? And so I look at it as a challenge and understanding that I got the group to get it done. And then um, we just got to go do it. What did Derek tell you about Billy? Love, you know what I'm saying? And so for me, the biggest thing about me is I'm a, I'm a family man. Like I believe in, you know, having the family and um, having that family time. I get it. You got to work. You got to grind. But just understanding that his faith, you know, is real and my faith is real. And just so similar things that we've talked about in an interview that was really for me, like that was the, that was that set it off for me. I was like, yep, I definitely want to make sure that we get this thing right for him. What are some of the things that you noticed when you, got the job and started kind of looking over yeah. the stuff. What, what, what stood out to you? Maybe well, the biggest more? thing, and this goes back to all of my mentors, is, hey, when you get a job, go look at the explosive plays. It'll, it'll paint a picture for you. Um, you go and look at it, and let's be real, you guys seen the games, right? So we just talk about it. we got to fix the tackling. Um, point blank period, and that's the emphasis of me and the rest of our staff, um, just making sure that we get that fixed, especially in the back end. We talked about that a lot. And then, um, you know, just protecting the deep part of the field. When I talk to our guys, and they'll all ask me, there's two things that I'm always about. Like, we got to protect Gator Nation. And it's my job, your jobs, everybody's jobs. And that's how we protect it by making sure we have a backstop. Um, so those are really two of the most important things that I saw that needs to get fixed. And like I said, at the end of the day, it just comes back to, you know, the communication part of it. I feel like our communication, once we get that back on track, everything will be fine. Can you discuss your willingness to get tackled in practice? Yeah, everybody's last, I've been doing that for years. I've been tackling. I've been getting tackled. I mean, at the end of the day, I said this. If I'm getting out there with them, they need to feel it. Um, and they need to understand that that's the mindset we got to have. So I've been doing it for years. 
that 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 sounds like a guy that is very 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 confident in his craft, and I yes. love it. And I want to hit somebody just listening to it. Yeah, that's I, you nailed it on the head. It sounds like somebody who's confident in what they're doing and confident in the way they carry themselves. And that's huge, especially coaching coaching in general. You need to be confident when you say something, and you deliver something. Um, and, and it starts, I think, with that mindset of willing to get onto the field. And, and I even love his response when they go, you know, you're willing to get tackled. It was like he was like, like, what do you mean? It's like I put my underwear on this morning. You you don't ask me that. Like that should be a common a common thing. Right, that's, that, that's how he responded is like every coach should be willing to get their ass clapped and I should be willing to clap those guys back. That's my, not every coach can, but <laughs> I understand that. But it's like, look, if, I'm, if I have the ability to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going, going to continue to do it because if I'm going to ask you to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it myself. And I, I, I always loved that and appreciated that. And even just kind of, again, speaking about, and it's, I know we're kind of getting worked up about something crazy, but you were speaking about it earlier. The things we're hearing about it and just the attention to detail he said so basically they're creating the pattern like hey we wake up we tackle we go to bed we tackle you know what i mean like it is just it's something that was so you almost think like it's just second nature but you saw how bad it was and i'm glad that we're you know putting a huge point of emphasis on it. i love that he kind of called out like hey this is where we sucked at this is what we're going to focus on and he also said later on which it wasn't in this but like hey last year's last year i don't want to get too caught up in it it is what it is it's done or over with we're going to learn from it and move on but this year's this year and here's where we are now so like Zach said, the secondary is getting a ton of praise. It's getting a ton of hype. We, we better see it come Saturday. I don't think, I going back, thinking about last year, something that stood out to me a lot last year was the trenches, right? The D-line was getting off explosively. I think the linebackers made some big plays. We didn't see too much of the cornerback play, I think because it, Mertz was always rolling out and making some hella throws and, and you know putting things in, in, in spots. But if your D-line's getting to, to your quarterback as quickly as they were last year, your cornerback, your your secondary should be eaten. They weren't eaten either, if you think about it now, right? So all those things are something we're going to be able to watch and see how it all comes together. Again, the spring game, and it's just going to be our, our our first and last taste of this team until, you know, August. So all eyes, I'm excited to see the turnout too. Yeah, I mean, you go back to last year, I think we were 13th or 14th in the SEC and missed tackles. And you, you look at this quote, it says, height, length, and speed. What does Billy Napier always preach? Like, uh, height, length, speed, size. He looks at all those, right? So he's already went and evaluated all these kids and he's got all this talent and you hear what he has to say about all the talent. He's saying, look, look, we, we've got height, length, speed everywhere. All he needs is a guy to make it happen. Like we all, we already heard what was said about Corey Raymond and what was going on before he, he had left the university of Florida. Now we got Will Harrison. This is a guy like, obviously you heard the speech. Like this is a guy he, he acts like he's the type of guy that gets pissed off if something's going on that he doesn't like. And to me, I hope the days of getting targeted by a defenseless Luther Burden are over. I want us to start hitting somebody now. For sure. And look, I mean, look into this quote a little bit more, right? I was telling Coach Napier this might be the, one of the most talented groups. Not saying it is, but one of. We know what this group is. We know what it consists of. It's still a younger group, although we've got the Tricorez. Uh, turn, Aza Turner's and DJ Douglas that add to the mix. But think about the defenses he had at, at Washington. He had top tier defenses in the Pac 12. So he's had some talented groups. Guys have gone on to the NFL. I don't think he's comparing this, obviously, to his NFL teams that he's worked with, but definitely his, co his collegiate teams. And he's coached some pretty uh, hefty secondary teams uh, in college football. But look, we're in the SEC. The talent should be better, right? What we have there should be above bar what he's ever coached. That's just is what it is. So that's a good thing uh, that we're hearing that. <clears throat> Especially given yeah, if the you, that he has coached. If if you go back and look at the star level on defense, there is no reason for this defense to be as bad as it is, or as bad as it as it has been since 2020. It's just there's no excuse. So I, I'm, I'm glad the days of Todd Grantham are over. I'm glad the days of uh, Corey the, the the Corey Raymond we thought was going to be here are over, and now we have somebody like Will Harris that will at least we know will have will will put his own body on the line for people to tackle them in practice and at least give them a feel of what to do and how it feels like. And this is what you're going to be doing every day. Your shoulder's going to hurt from tackling people. You're just going to keep going to have to do it. I mean, I mean, that's just how it is. That's how most successful defenses in the SEC are successful is because they're at the right place, at the right time. And they play with fast fury and they hit people, hit somebody, hashtag hit somebody. I love it. Tristan Creel. Shout out to my man, Tristan, man. Good to see you, buddy. 10 High Top Sports membership. 
And uh, all you guys just got uh, some membership. So thank you uh, to Chris, to Tristan, who uh, hooked him up. You the man, Tristan. I appreciate you, big dog. Much love, man. Uh, yeah, look, I'm excited. Also, too, I, I think about this from time to time because I see people in the comment section. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid that Kool-Aid this time. I'm not buying into. It. I'm not buying into the lies. First of all, it's not lie. It's the gospel. Okay. Second of all, this whole mindset of like I don't want to be disappointed. Then like like you could have that perception about anything. Like why even wake up in the morning? Like I don't I don't want to think today is going to be a good day in case it's a bad day. So you're just going to be just mute. How do you even know if it's going to be a bad good day? You got to go in expecting it's going to be a good day. It's always a great hey, it's always a good day to have a great day, right? And whatever happens happens, but I'd rather start up here and maybe have you know get knocked down a few pegs versus just starting here because look, going into the season not hyped, you're starting at level 0. So if shit doesn't go your way, you're going to be at -15, all right? This is this is math here, boys. If we hype ourselves up to a level 25, level 50, I'm going to be rocking at level 100, you know the drill. I'm only going to be able to get knocked down maybe 50, 45, because by the time the season comes, I'm down to like maybe 8, 9, 10, and it's right back to the lion season. It's just simple math for you guys, for the ones that want to be you know, pessimistic and upset about everything. Just different ways of looking at it. Different strokes for different folks. I understand that, but yeah. fill the glass up to 100. Let's be fired up. Quit moping and poping about last year. Get over it, all right? I get it. It sucked. We sucked. It's a new year, baby. Let's lock the fuck in, Dave. Yeah. I mean, it's like when I go to the gym, I say, hey, I'm going to bench 600 pounds. And I go and bench like a thousand, man. Like, it's just, I mean, it, that's the mentality that you got to have. I mean, it's like Harmonic Woods. You go to Harmonic Woods, right? Yeah, I'm going to drink like 20,000 beers and you drink like 50,000. I mean, hey, like, shoot I for mean, the stars, land on the moon. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, you guys are, you guys aren't even shooting to leave the, the atmosphere. You're just, you're just, you're just hoping to make it to the airport. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like what's up, bro? You don't, you don't even want to take the plane to take off. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not even, that's not even worth it. Hard schedule. What? That's a mindset, Nick. That's a mindset. Miami sucks. UCF doesn't want the smoke. FSU in shambles. Okay. In shambles. I'll tell you. Sanford, they don't want it. That Bulldog don't want it. Texas A&M, we're going to lose it to Jay Bateman and the boys. Come on, dude. It's, 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 it's a great value Florida football team. All right? We're not going down to Texas A&M. I can assure you that. LSU and Brian Kelly in his country accent. Okay? He's going, he should have took a Michigan job when he had a chance. All right? That's where I'm at with it right now, boys and girls. Don't, hey, don't let, don't let us have a, 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 Bay Mouse, a, a, a bomb ass uh, spring game. Because <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, like Ole Miss, they're going to score like 200 points because their defense sucks. So, I mean, we're, we're going to get to watch that. I mean, if you think the schedule's hard, then you're just soft. <laughs> soft star. I love it. Let's go. All right, let's talk about this. Offense and D projections. Well, we got five bucks from Levi. Says, Harrison spitting all facts in the chat. Go smash the like and subscribe button. We're so back. Let's go get your Shelton. You're 100. Your 100 is your normal levels. This is true. This is true. And, yes, smash the like button. We're 121 likes, 450 strong in here. Let's get it. Y'all going to go over the visitors list for the spring game? Uh, Dave has that, which we'll go over in just a moment. But you still have it, right, Dave? Well, you'll pull it up. I can pull it up. Yeah, yeah. So we've done our projections of what we think the D-line, the O-line, all these positions. We've been doing this all, all offseason. So Nick Del Tor, our own very Adam Scheffner, uh, dropped his projections. And obviously his projections are probably a little more truer than ours. We were pretty we were pretty close. That's all I'm gonna say. Running back, Montreal, uh, Trey on Webb, quarterback, Graham and DJ Lagway. Easy squeezy. Receiver, which is what we all thought. This is what I was talking about just a minute, moment ago. Eugene Khalil Shamir, backed up by Marcus Burke, which I love that. Quavion Frazier's a lot of uh experience there. And Aiden Mizell making extreme steps uh this this offseason, also putting on some good weight too. Tight end, love this. Hayden Hansen, Arlos Bordenham, one and two. Backup, Tony Livingston and Keon Zipperer. Obviously, we know Zipperer is coming off that injury, so that could play a factor into that, but hell of a good backup, great depth there. O-line, this is where we're all interested in. This is an interesting name here that I didn't even know of. But Barbara at left tackle, Najee, Jake, Damian, then Crenshaw. Backups are De- Devin at left tackle, Riley Simmons, fifth-year senior at left guard, then Roger Kearney, Bryce Lovett, and Cameron Waits at right guard and right tackle. Caden Jones and Fletcher Westfall have also been getting a lot of reps due to the injuries of uh, Barber and I think uh, Cam Waits still coming, recovering from his injury. So, again, a lot of depth there. Christian Williams is the name that I keep saying. We didn't hear his name there as well. So, 
Love hearing that on the O-line. Nothing too surprising there, I think. We, we all expected that. But let's go into... Yeah. Go ahead. Do you have anything on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to bring up Bryce Lovett, too. I mean, like, if uh, you said you have a, a Davian George who struggles, maybe you move Bryce Lovett in that spot. I mean, and this is all just stuff that we're hearing out of the, the, the spring scrimmages and every, everything anyway. But uh, I just wanted to add his name in there because he has been impressive from what I've heard from, like, a lot of people. So I just wanted to put it, throw his name in there. Love it. Yes, sir. So defensive line, this is what I love, and this is what excites me. So starters for nose tackle and end. Again, this is where I asked Zach about. They've got Cam Jackson, Caleb Banks. For nose tackle backup, they've got uh, Jamari Lyons, retro sophomore. I'm pretty sure he was one that's, wasn't he the one that spit last at the FSU game? Or am I wrong? Yeah, I think, I think that's who it was. I, it was. I, I can't, yeah, I think it was him. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joey Slackman's backing up Caleb Banks. Again, I asked Zach about that. A lot of that could be due to him coming off the injury, not practicing as much. Either way, I like, I like the depth there. And then, or Kelby Collins. So think about that. Think about that D-line. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw all three of these guys at one time. So think about, kind of again, these are just how this, how this, the, the, the D-line gets shaken up a little bit. And then for Edge, listen to this. Justice Boone, which we know. TJ Searcy, backed up by Tyreek Sapp. Tyreek Sapp, obviously, we know what he was able to do, the energy that he brought. I, I look, the fact that he's going to be, you know, backup, great depth there. Then George Gums, a name that I've been saying all offseason, boys and girls. Nobody wanted to listen to me, but I've been putting it out there. He was a transfer from North Northern Illinois, I think, University. I think I nailed that on the head. I don't miss. I'm dialed in today. Uh, was a tight end, which is the reason why he wasn't really highly recruited as, a, as an edge. But kids, kids yoked. Kids jacked. And then it had a sophomore Cameron James and LJ uh, and freshman LJ have pushed Sap. But the veteran uh, Udali Lyman should still play his fair share. So, again, that edge position, we know what TJ Searcy did. We know the climbs that he made going into his sophomore campaign. Justice Boone, obviously, earning the number one jersey. He earned that for a good reason. Billy loves him. His work ethic has improved dramatically. He even said that in a recent interview we talked about on this show. Tyreek Sapp, again, we know what he does. George Gums, we don't know what he can do. But the fact that he's going to be getting the, the nod over the Cameron James and our five-star guy, LJ McCray, all good things, right? Because you're expecting these guys to be elite. That fires me up, Dave. Yeah, I mean, like when you can have a mixture of high level star talent mixed in with high experienced players, and when both of them collage together, like it, it, you have a perfect element for, uh, I guess, combustion on the you know whatever offensive line. I just missed that, but but like, look, if you if you go to my article I wrote earlier today. I have notable names on defense, right? So DJ Douglas was my MVP because he's been all over the place. So I gave him that. But you look at the names, Ace Turner, Cam Jackson, Pop Howard, George Gums. I did list him. Devin Moore, Jason Marshall, Joey Slackman, Tyreek Sapp. Four of those players are on the defensive line. Look at Dave. Dave's sick with the stroke, boys. I've been trying to tell y'all. Inside linebacker, here we got Pup Howard. We just heard Zach say it. We just heard Zach put the juice out there. I love it. At yep. middle inside linebacker, at weak inside linebacker, Shamar James. Obviously, we know he's coming off of injury. Then the backups, we've got Nunnery, Derek Wingo, and Miles Graham. Don't forget, Aaron Childs has not enrolled yet. So this room, as you can see now, extremely thick. A lot, lot of experience with Nunnery, Wingo, and Shamar. And then with the addition of Pup, Miles, and then Aaron Childs, that's where that quality, the ceiling quality, yep. uh, increases dramatically. And I, I look, looking at this room... There's still a lot of holes there against Shamar James. How is he going to be coming off of injury? Pup Howard's still very young. He could be like a Jordan Castell was last year. Going to make some big plays, but also there's going to be just, I would say, the freshman mistakes, things that you expect a young player to do, right? Those, those things are going to happen part of games. So how do you overcome that? By putting a lot more experience around him, which is the Shamar James, Nunnery, and Derek Wingo. Um, so I would I would agree with Zach, although I you know I agree with him anyways, but of us possibly going out and getting a linebacker in the portal. Definitely something to keep an eye on. And for good reason. It's just because, again, it's the unknown in the linebacker room. I'm right. excited. A lot of question marks, though, in, 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 in a good way, I would say. Yeah, Quarter and I'll, and I'll even say, if, if, Miles, if Miles Graham didn't have that back surgery, you'd probably be hearing from him, too. You'd probably be hearing from him in practice. And at the same time, like, you, you hear about the defense making strides. Um, we, always, we hear about the defensive linemen. We hear about the turnovers and everything like that. We don't even know how good this defensive line is. Has this defensive line been getting pressure this whole time and causing the turnovers? 
I mean, the, the, the defensive backfield's best friend is the defensive line and getting pressure. I mean, th- this could be the reason why you're hearing about turnovers happening in practices and all this other kind of stuff. But then, of course, you're going to worry about the offensive line and all that. But if you can get a good glue and get kind of a good mixture of plays from offensive line and defensive line, what we've heard with running backs and all that and how they've been doing, like, that's a good thing. I mean, like, both sides of the football are making plays, and that's what you want to see. No, 110%. And look, the, the reason why I have the question marks with the linebacker room is because of the injuries. Th- those things, you never know how they're going to impact someone. That's Shamar James and Miles Graham. So, the, the, you know, how long it's going to take. People keep putting Jack Pyburn. He's not on this list because he's still recovering from his injury. I don't think he's played much at all. I think he's, I mean, he tore his ACL, and he's, he's much further along. I think people, because he's been posting a lot and you see him running around, the guy broke or snapped his ACL like the second to last game of the year. Like that was, what, four months ago? No, more than that now. Like eight months ago? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ACLs take a while. Six? Because it was November? It was so six months ago? So, yeah, I mean, look, that's that takes some time. And the guy the guy is making some huge strides. So, I think I mean, game one, maybe? You can you recover. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, you can recover from an ACL, but you can't be, like, fully recovered for a while. So, it yeah. takes a minute to yeah, fully look, recover. Even game one could be in question, to be honest with you. I mean, think about... What's his face? Um, their quarterback for Utah. The guy sat out the entire year, and it happened around the same time. So it's like, yeah, you're making progress, but it's like, is it worth, you know, a season for one? Because one play, your whole thing can go to, go to shit. It's like, look, are you going to play anyways? No, retro this year, you're going to be the man next year. I see that playing out for Piper, but we'll see. Quarterback here. Yeah, I mean, they're... Good. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, there's so much depth there that, that that could be the option. That could be with what the coaching staff and maybe the, the, these players during the practice and even fall camp. Um, if they if they prove even more during fall camp, maybe you do see the coaches say, hey, look, take a rest, take a red shirt. Or maybe he plays four games and then takes a red shirt. Ke- Keon Zipper, I believe he's he's much further along in his process because he injured his leg in, in summer. So this was hap- this happened almost, almost yeah, a year yeah. ago. It- him and Boone were injured during practice. They they didn't even play the season. Yeah. Um. So cornerback, we got Jason Marshall. I'm really excited for Jason Marshall. I think he really started to find his stride at the end of the year last year. Again, it was almost like there was a, a, a something happened for him, and it was like he's like I'm done listening to my coaches, and I'm gonna start listening to the coaches who I think is gonna be here because he's the only one that really kind of you know figured it out. We started seeing progress from him. The other guys who didn't figure it out are no longer there. So just. Yeah. Something to think about. Devin Moore, obviously, we know we've we, been dealing with him with the injuries. There are a ton of great things about him. Love hearing that one, too. Dejon Johnson and Jakeem Jackson, both uh, rising sophomore. Jakeem Jackson, I was I was high on him last year. This kid is an absolute stud. Watching him last year, yeah. he's he's special. He is very special. I think the hype that Devin Moore had, Jakeem Jackson has, uh, and I think we're going to see a lot of Jakeem Jackson in, in a good way. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah, Jakeem, he had a few busted coverages last year, but that's going to happen with a freshman. So, sure. I mean, like, he's learning on the fly. This, this is his second year. It, it, let's see what he can do. I, I, I love Jakeem Jackson. I love his speed. I mean, obviously, I mean, like, in these uh, camps and everything during high school, I mean, he was just burning it. And he, I think he became a top 50 player by the end of the, the recruiting cycle. So, I mean, yeah, at least that was something that him and saw that eventually became top 50. So, For sure. At the star position, Aaron Gates. Redshirt freshman, remember, he was part of that class last year. Aaron Gates always gets the, a nice little ring because he was somebody that committed to Billy his the very first cycle, I want to say, right? Not even last year, the very first cycle. He committed to Dan Mullen Correct. and he stayed in the class. That's what I meant to say, <laughs> yes. But like when I, meant, when I say committed to Billy, like he committed to Billy first because he was already committed to the class, stayed on, rode yeah. through and through. This guy's a true Gator, dealt with injuries, I believe. So he redshirted, and now he here he is uh, ready to rock and roll. And he changed positions. He was a cornerback, changed to that safety slash tar- star position. Now, I, I had DJ Douglas marked the star position. It seems that I was wrong on this one. This is the one that I got wrong. Then Sharif Denson as the backup. And Sharif got starting time last year there. So really shows to you what this yeah. Aaron Gate, the talent that he has. Again, we haven't seen much of it. We just we know what he was bringing in. But And again, Sharif Denson, I think, was you know played very well when he was asked to play. In this safety position, unreal how, how, how deep it is. I mean, yeah. Jordan Castell, Ace Turner, we know what those guys are going to do. Bryce Thornton, who we saw a lot last year. Again, Triquez Bridges. I think Triquez and DJ are going to probably get that starting position at safety more so than we think, which is for good reason. But I still think they'll rotate into that star. I, I know they don't have that up here, but I just, 
I don't see how you keep those guys off the field. I don't. I, I would. See, why? Why would you? Why wouldn't you want DJ? From what we're hearing, why wouldn't you want Castell, Aza, and DJ on the field at one time? That's my thought. That's my thought. So. Oh, you're going. You're going free safety, right? Yeah. Or is it strong safety? Oh, okay. Okay. Because I was about to say, what? You forget about DJ Douglas there, bro? But yeah, never no, mind. He's, he's, I know what you're talking about. He's the backup, though. He's labeled as a backup. So, and again, think about this yeah. was a position that, Mil that Miguel Mitchell was helping with, Jordan Castell. So last year it was Miguel Mitchell, Jordan Castell, and Bryce Thornton. That was our safety room, basically. And, yeah. then, J and then Jane Hill was in that strong safety. But um, yeah, I, I like where the room's at. I mean, on paper, it looks good. Yeah, I mean, they they really did good in the transfer portal, man, especially shoring up that safety position. I mean, they were, I mean, if you fast forward to last year, you're going to just say, oh, well, there's not really a lot of depth there. I mean, Jordan Castell, and that's it. They brought in so much talent from the portal for safety now, even though that some of them may have one or maybe have two years. I mean, you brought in a whole multitude of them. So, like, if one goes, you already got the other one lined up to, to go in and play. And I'm pretty sure they know that – one of them may not get to play fully the whole year. They may get to play fully the whole the whole time and and maybe kill their year of eligibility. But at least you know th they have a heads up of like, hey, look, you may not be the starter because we brought in this many people from the portal, but you're going to get your opportunity. And if you don't get your opportunity this year, you might get it next year. Absolutely. Um, and again, the the this with the safety room as well too. Going back to the, we keep we keep talking about depth, but we we kind of learned last year these you know, the depth chart, starters, all those things, you can't put too much weight into it. But I am excited to see once we'll, we'll know tomorrow, the orange and uh, blue teams, how this gets separated. And so we'll get to see these guys kind of get to run their own defense. So they'll, they'll be split up. Um, you guys are asking about Uncle Lou. Uncle Lou's going to be on next week. I figured it'd be best for us to talk to him after our spring games because his is this Saturday too, versus having him on before the game. So he's going to be on next week alongside, and Dave doesn't know this yet, but Josh Prey's coming on next week too. So I figured... Ah! <laughs> who, who better to tell lies with us after the spring game than Josh Prey? So I've got to figure out the lineup because yeah. I can't have Dave and Lou on at the same time. Um, <laughs> the, the three of us. The three of us. Come on now. You got to give me a shot at Uncle Lou. I Come on. It. He's my buddy. I won't allow He's it. He's my buddy. I won't allow it. Um, good stuff yeah. there. Let's talk about a few more, few more things. We've got Masters Week, but I do want to talk about this. This has been going around. I, I think it's interesting. It's a, it's a fun little topic. But obviously, we had the Women's Basketball Championship and the Men's Basketball Championship this past weekend for basketball. Congrats to UConn for going back-to-back. -back. I told you guys on Monday, I, go, I don't see this team losing. This team was was absolutely stacked. They they demolished everybody. It wasn't even it wasn't even close. Like, I was like, this is... The, and honestly, South Carolina was too. I, I, I told the wife when we were watching the game, I was like, Iowa needs a hope and a prayer to beat this team. Like, Kaylin Clark has to be yeah. absolutely perfect to beat this team. And they came out balls to go up 20 to yeah. two uh, in women's basketball. That game's over any other team in South Carolina came roaring back <laughs> and, and crushed yeah, them. I, like, I don't, I don't I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't really watch women's basketball at all, but I, I, I've noticed South Carolina's record. I noticed they were undefeated the whole year and I, I'm going in there and I'm watching that lead and I'm like, Oh yeah, this baby's over with. That no. just goes to show you how good that team is, how much talent was on that team to come back from like an 18-point deficit and come back and win that game. That, that, was, that was crazy. I watched that whole game all the way through, too. No, it was, it was a great game. So everyone's obviously like up in arms like because they had almost 19 million, the most viewed women's basketball game of like all time. Yeah. yeah beat a couple other I, records. You got and, me watching women's basketball? Well, the, then you said something. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, man. And then the men's had 14.8. And a lot of people were like, well, a lot had to do with it because it was on Monday at 920. And that definitely played a factor. Yeah. And that game could have been at 730. Yeah. I didn't care to watch it. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it a buck with you. I was pumped for, to watch the 3 o'clock uh, uh, Caitlin Clark in, in South Carolina on Sunday. It Look, it definitely played a factor. Sunday at 3 o'clock was nice. I thought it was going to be a little bit later on Sunday. But, I, dude, UConn, if you watched... Any of these games, it, it was an absolute bloodbath. That just they were unmatched in every every way. And again, UConn isn't really a very exciting, flashy brand either. Um, but to my argument was that was like, look, if this is the college football championship at nine twenty on a Monday, everybody's watching. So they're trying to. I, I get it. I get the argument. You're trying to. And, and look, I think it definitely played a factor into it. Sunday at three o'clock, when literally nothing else is on, when you're you're like conditioned to watch sports on Sunday. NASCAR was on in Martinsville. I had that turned on. But that played a factor. But still, like this women's basketball at three o'clock on Sunday has been forever, and it's never beaten the men. So kudos to them. Um, they look the last, the final four, the lead eight was electric. I mean, 
what's happening with with men's basketball. We're kind of losing. Like even that Duke North North Carolina rivalry, it's still exciting. I don't feel like it's had the same kind of weight that it's had in the years past. Um, but that LSU and Iowa matchup was electric, and then you had UConn. UConn has a ton, women's basketball has a ton of history. Nobody watched South Carolina NC State because we knew that was going to be a bloodbath. Um, and then South Carolina, obviously, Don Staley, she's a great coach. She had her controversial <laughs> top of her cover, her interview, which caused obviously some people to tune in too. But perfect, perfect uh, course for a perfect recipe for some success for that. But all in all, it's a good weekend. Good weekend for basketball for sure. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. That, that dr- the drama between women, like we were talking about, I guess last week, is just it's just it's it's more amped up. Like if two guys are mad at each other, it, it, it okay, you're mad for like five minutes, goes away, we don't care anymore. You get some woman mad at each other. You get some woman saying some stuff on a microphone. That's clear, pure entertainment right there, man. Like I, I can watch between that all day. You and, between you and Steve, you guys, like the HR department's gonna be all over us. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Uh, but look, it was good. When the house is burning, I'm the guy watching it going, hey, look, let's record this with a camera. Let's, let's, no, it, let's. Was, it was it was great. I, I loved it. Caitlin Kirk, like I said, changed the game completely. And they had, they had a phenomenal uh, group of women uh, did this this go around. But she was bro, Caitlin Kirk is something special, man. That was fun to watch. Yeah. Fun to watch. I, I, I saw her straight up just like dribble the ball, just stop right as she was dribbling the ball. And just boom, shoot it oh, in three. CJ like, Dorsey perfect. says like, USA. Oh. I forgot. We've got, we've got the Olympics coming up. So yeah, Juju, she plays at USC. It's gonna be uh interesting to see if oh, yeah, Caitlin right. Clark goes and plays on that team and what that team, how that team, that WNBA team for the the Olympics seem exciting to watch because how they put that together, how dominant that team can be now. Caitlin Clark on a uh, Olympic team, that's the ultimate Wheaties box material right there. That's that's a okay. that's a good one. Q Lee, I loved every moment of South Carolina winning it. Nobody asked you, Q. Nobody asked you. <laughs> um, last little bit, boys, before we rock and roll out of here again, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, come by and see us. Harmonic Woods, Dave will be there holding it down, uh, sober Ooh. as can be, organic uh, fireball. I will have my details hopefully figured out in the next 48 hours, so I'll tell you where I will be doing a show. Definitely want to say hi to all of you if you guys want to get a photo, chit chat, all those things. Uh, love talking to everybody and hanging out, and then uh, we'll go into the game and uh, relax and watch some good game. But also, too. If you haven't done it yet, they Florida Victorious is putting on a phenomenal event. I, I I'm not going to do it because it's going to be a, a rocking and a rolling. And um, but they're allowing you to meet the players after the fact, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, and coaches too, Billy. I know. I wanted to do it, uh, but look, I, I want to get back back home for the Masters, so I'm going to be waiting in line all day. Um, but it should be a really cool event. So if you guys are able, to, you know, if you're a member, I think you can just go on there and click register to get a ticket. Hey, hey, they they got they got Wi Fi in the stadium, man. Just stream it. But yeah, you have to, yeah you. Uh, but if, if you're gonna if you're gonna join it and you're already a member, you just gotta kind of register for a ticket. The tickets free. If you're non member, the tickets thirty bucks. You gotta register for that. Um, and if you, I, I, I guess before I wasn't informed of this, but I know that notice now, and I have to ask Jen that you have to you go up to the tailgate, you get your wristband, so you can go. You know, prior to after the game. You go to the Florida Victorious tailgate. It's, it's right there on the Gator Walk. It's it's right there. You can't miss it. You go, you get your wristband, and then after the game, you can go down, and they won't uh, try to escort you out of there. Awesome. Uh, people are asking where to watch the game. Kay Ziegler said ESPN+, Plus, SEC+, Plus, and GSN. So there you go. Online, I don't know if they'll stream it online anywhere. They typically don't, especially if SEC+, Plus and ESPN+, Plus have it. Um, so that's that, you'll be able to watch it after the game for sure. But... It is Masters Week. It's my one of my favorite weeks of the year. I've been telling you guys we had we were having this run and we're getting toward the end of my exciting run where it was March Madness, time change, the Masters, TPC, like all of it. It's been it's been a great four weeks. Weather's been fantastic. But again, Masters Week starts tomorrow. I'm beyond jazzed up. I look, if Tiger's playing, I'm all in on Tiger. That's who I want to win, who I think is gonna win. I think Brooks is. I think Brooks is going to be coming back with some vengeance. I read an article today that Scotty Scheffler, his wife's pregnant, and he vowed that if she were to go into labor, that he would withdraw from the tournament. So, wow. uh, yeah, that's ballsy for anybody who's picking anything. Sam Burns too, for those betters out there. Sam Burns is also his wife is a week away. So those 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 things are a factor to keep in mind. Xander Shuffle is a chump. Okay, he's going to choke. Don't pick him to win. He might shoot low. The guy's got zero kahunas. 
Okay, He does not have what it takes to get it done. The guy does not have the balls to get it done. John Rahm, I feel like a lot of little controversial there. Rory, it seems like it, like the media hypes up for Rory to be there. I don't know if Rory's got that. I don't. I just don't, haven't seen it. I have not seen Rory play good golf. Jordan Spieth. Yeah. Now I I don't know about the media hype, but those are some really good discus players, man. I can't wait to check I, them out. I can't stand it. it. It just crushes me that Dave literally knows anything about like l- anything outside of Florida football. Like I'm over here like talking to a wall over here. Um. So we'll see. I'm pumped though. I'm hey, pumped. well, I, before we were on the show, I said, hey, I don't, I don't really watch golf, but I named like three of them. I mean, you named I, I named Phil Tiger Woods and Tiger Woods. That's not that doesn't count. No, I, I said McElroy. I said Rory McElroy. Barely. Remember? Barely. Let me know down in the chat oh, who you guys got for your. How do you get pregnant nine months before the Masters? I, bro, Doug, I was thinking the same thing, bro. Like you could have planned for that a little bit. Hey, question for everyone in the chat: If you're in the Masters now. Scotty, has Scotty won it? Yeah, yeah, he Scotty won it by a long shot like two years ago. I'm an idiot. He's yeah, won he did. one. He did. But if, you're, if you I haven't watched. won one, either way, you've won or haven't won, and your wife's pregnant, and you're in the middle of the Masters, do you, let's say it's Sunday, and you're, and you're down by, or you're, it's Saturday, and you're in second place. Are you withdrawn from the tournament? Hell no, if I'm getting that green jacket. Well, you don't know. I mean, you're in second place. Oh, no, I'll be getting first place if I'm missing that. So you would miss your child's birth to win? If I knew I was going to get first place. No, 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 you can't, no. You, can't, you can't guarantee that. That's the way of life, Doug. Or David, I just read Doug. You can't guarantee that, David. You're go- it's Saturday. Just, just Carter out there, and, and then, hey, hold on, honey, I'm getting this swing through. Hold on, hold on. And then you swing, and then run back over. That's all you got to do. So you're Okay, so you're playing. Hey, hey, hey. Two, two birds with one stone, man. I don't know what any of that means. Get the stretch. Harrison. Get the stretch. <laughs> Heron says, Harrison says he's playing. I think most guys would say they're playing. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I was assuming. I was assuming the chat would say, hey, roll out the stretcher. Just bring her with us. And then we'll work on our swings. You know, get out there. Hey, honey, I won the Masters. And look, look, we have a little boy, too. Look at this. Ooh, Taylor says you've got to miss a tournament once in a lifetime. I mean, you can have more kids. Yeah, yeah. He's, Kay Ziegler said, Spolder giving out shots. I'll give out shots at the Masters. That's what I'll be doing. No, I, Make it fun. Harmonic Woods. Oh, I'll be doing that too. Yeah, Harmonic Woods. Yeah. So, interesting thing to think about this weekend as you guys are enjoying the Masters. It is a fantastic, beautiful weekend. I can't wait for it. <laughs> the professor says, I would miss my child's bird for the high top draft spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I believe it. I 100% believe oh, it. I I would hey. I I don't question it for a bit for the brand. Guy's a locker room guy right there. <laughs> the I, room. I, you know, you, you, sometimes in life you got to make great sacrifices, man. And and, and he, the professor is a prime example of somebody that makes sacrifices. Was for it, the team, so. Wasn't it? So Harrison, just how cool would it be to say you win the Masters when your kid was born? Wasn't it Van Jefferson that had a son when he won the Super Bowl? Wasn't it him? And he named him like so. champion yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I think he was in the middle of a Super Bowl. I, I think that was him. I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't want to spell that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was EFD crazy. Says, though, I man. get another shot at the Masters eventually. Don't get to see that kid ever again. Kid being born ever again. True. <laughs> a lot of decisions. <laughs> Especially for Scotty, who's already won it. You know, he'll definitely be back. So. Nah. I, I, I'm kidding around, man. If I was. Uh... My wife, the was wife just walked uh, in. The wife just walked in and gave Dave the eyes. <laughs> hey, get out of here. Get out of here. No. Um, yeah. Um, if my wife was pregnant, I would I would be there. But I don't golf though either. So I love it. All right, boys. Great show. Best day of the week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Smash the like button. Come see us on Saturday, please. For the love for the love of God. Come say hi. Dab us up wherever we're at. Harmonic Woods, uh, the towns and tailgate. That's right on Gator Walk, so that's not hard to find. Lincoln was born on High Top Live. That is true, Andrew. So you know, there's some great things. You know what I mean? We've we've done some great things. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, you guys be good. Have a great Wednesday. Tomorrow, I think we might be doing a show because any orange and blue teams are going to come out. And if it does, we'll probably go live and talk about it. Somebody asked, are you streaming after the game on Saturday? There will be a call-in show because we always do a call-in show after the game. 
So I'll be driving home doing the call-in show with, of course, Cody the Professor. So keep your bells turned on, like, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Shelton. And I'll be reporting the news live from Gainesville Saturday.